So what I'm doing is some pyrography. I've picked a, a bit of script that I quite like the look of and just penciled it onto my Lazy Susan. Well, it's given this a good sanding just so that I've got a good surface. I had a different design on it before, so it sanded off. I've written on the script that I like, Chateau Marinery in pencil. And now I'm just going over it with this uh, no implement, so that gets very, very hot. And it has a variety of nibs you can put on it, little brass nibs of different shapes. So I'm just using one just to follow the script. And then I'll give it um, a bit of lacquer to protect it. And I'm going to use that on the table for breakfast in the morning, put the jams on it. So here we have the completed Lazy Susan, which will then have a selection of jams on it. And that's part of our breakfast selection that we do for a continental breakfast. So it just makes it easy for people to get to the jams. I can fit about seven on there, in fact. Um, I think all we're waiting for at the moment is uh, the pastries to come out of the oven, but everything is here for a continental breakfast. I'm in the new storeroom and I've just built a box, a very big box, um, two and a half metres by two and a half metres by a metre and a half-ish, something like that, um, for storing mattresses in, so it's got a big door on the end here. Oh, open the door, and then inside, I've just got a couple of pallets in the bottom there just to keep the mattresses off the floor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a uh, tubular heater under there just to keep a bit of warmth in there. But it's got a roof on it, it's just all four sides, just to keep them clean, tidy, and uh, away from things that might nibble. There you go. Two mattresses in the mattress stall. Starters anyway. And shut that up and uh, they'll be safe, secure and clean. From the dining room and the servery, walk down this little corridor which I recently decorated and put up some of the horseshoes that I've found. Um, we also have a loo in this door, the kitchen through that door, and this door leads to the boot room. So this is one of our access points into the, the building. It's the one we use the most, but we haven't done anything to this room yet. So it's next on the list. This will give us a uh, entrance for any guests that want to come in late and need a key for the door. Our front door only has one key and it only opens from the inside. So this will be our access point for anybody coming in late. And this is the drive that way behind the yew tree. So they'll be parking in this area and coming in through this door. Let me just show you that. So it's a very old heavy door up some steps, it's got a beautiful floor, original tile floor, which has been scrubbed when we first got here and not looked at since. And it has quite a lot of quite deep gaps between the tiles that need fixing. It has become just a dumping ground really. We've got a very old original sink here, stone sink, which most likely predates this house, most likely from the chateau before. It's huge, so it's about a metre and a half by a metre. And the water for it would have come from the pump out there. And this would have been a scullery, so this would have been where they washed all the dishes. So, uh, so far all I've done is months ago I scrubbed the floor I did at one point put some paint on that pillar under the sink 
and I've scratched off all the paint. This was um, the same colour as the door there. A lot of this area was painted in brown paint. So I've actually chiseled all that off as good as I can. Mark has built a hanging area for coats and we've got an air area there for storage, which is just an old Ikea unit. We've got a, a bit of a light, new lights hung up there and a few old hooks over there and a shoe store. So we're gonna have a decorate in here and smarten it up. So it stood on the sink, I've been washing the walls down. So the whole room has been scrubbed. So the dark areas are where it's been scrubbed with a cream cleaner and given a good soak with that and half the uh, ceiling has now been wiped off with a clean wet cloth. So you can see this difference between what I've cleaned and what hasn't been cleaned. So I'm in the boot room where Barbara's been cleaning and she's done a smashing job of cleaning. It's a different room now. Um, and I've just been prepping for putting panelling up. So I've been putting all these battens on the wall. Uh, put panelling all down that side. Um, Going to build a broom cupboard in the corner here to cover the meter, etc. Um, panelling under here. And uh, I'm going to panel across above the sink. And I've just started here by putting the first three strips down the side here. That'll go right across. And then I'm going to panel around the unit at the top there so it just fills it in and finishes it off. So all the walls have been washed down several times and sanded. And Mark has started battening the walls. So I've undercoated over all the dark brown so far the window area, the doors, got the first undercoat, little shelf unit there. And Mark started doing all the boarding up. So putting some tongue and groove around. So we've knocked off all the loose plaster from lower down and put up tongue and groove over the top so that the walls can breathe. Because the problem with what they've done in the past is they've just put coats and coats and coats of thick gloss and then the dampness can't get out of the base of the walls and it blows all the plaster off. So Barbara's been undercoating in the boot room and uh, last night she decided she was going to do something with the hanging stall for the coats and uh, she's been decoupaging with a book. Uh, about um, the history of bagpipes and uh, Scotland. So these are all pages from the piping traditions of the north of Scotland. It's quite interesting some of it. But it just makes something different to uh, have in the back of the, the coat store. So I can get a bit further away so you can get a view of what it looks like. Yeah. We're up at the camping field and uh, we decided at the end of season now we're clearing everything away. So we're clearing out the main tent. We get that down. The um, bell tents we've already cleared out and taken the stuff to the store. Uh, so this is the last one to clear out and then it needs to come down for the winter and get dried and stored. So there's the frame of the big tent or as we've been calling it, the clubhouse. Down for the winter, leaving one tent to come down and one tent base. 